All right, so now that I've flashed OpenTX on my TH9X radio transmitter, it's time to take a look at how to set up a model and bind the RF module that we get with the updated version. And I'll even cover how to set the failsafe and set up the aux switches. So now we'll take a look at the radio settings. All right, so to begin with, we'll first take a look at the radio setup. And the first option we have is for the sound settings. I'll set that to all. We can adjust the contrast of the display. Then I can set the battery low alarm. I haven't installed a backlight yet, but I'll do that in the future. If you want, you can disable the splash screen from here. So the first thing I'll change is the channel order. And I'll set that to AETR. And I'll change the mode to number two. So even though I had set the channel order and the mode when setting up the firmware in the OpenTX companion, the settings haven't reflected. And even the splash screen has not been updated. I think that's a problem with the OpenTX companion. Then next we have the trainer mode. So I've set that to off. Then we have the version screen where you can check what version of OpenTX you have. Then we have the switches where we can toggle all the switches and check them. The next we have the analog screen where you can check your gimbals. And we also have the option to calibrate the battery. So, so I'll use a voltage meter and I'm using a 3S LiPo for my radio. So I'll check the voltage. And it's at 12.2 volts. So I'll change that to 12.2. The next we have the calibration screen. I've already done this, so I'll skip this. If I hold the up button, I can see the stats and the timers. We have the debug screen if I press the down button. And to enter the model list, we can either press the minus key over here or the menu button. So I'll create a new model. And I'll delete the first one because, because if I select this and if I go to the mixer screen, you can see that the channel order is set to RETA, which was the default channel order when I first flashed OpenTX on this radio transmitter. And because we have changed the channel order to AETR, if I go to the model which I just created, you can see that the channel order is set to AETR so that way I don't have to edit all the channels and then set it in the right order so I'll delete the first model that was there by default and to do that I'll simply click the menu button once and then click it again and I'll hold the exit button and then I'll click menu to delete it so that's how you delete the model and I'll shift this to the first model. So trying to delete the model is a bit of a headache because the UI is not that great. So that's why I would recommend you use the OpenTX companion, which we'll take a look at in the later half. Then if I want, I can name the model over here. Then I can enable the timers. And if I want, I can set a time. So if I'm flying my FPV cord and the battery lasts only three minutes, the radio transmitter will start to beep as soon as the three minute threshold crosses. So if you want, you can reverse the throttle source 
or change the throttle source to something else and then we have the protocol settings so we can change this from ppm to ppm 16 ppm simulator so we have only three options to choose from so i'll set this to ppm and i'll increase the channels to 14 so if you're using servos and you notice that there are a few jitters then you could try to adjust the setting over here so you can increase this and also try to change the frame length by default this is set to 300 microseconds if you decrease the number of channels you can see that the ppm frame length also decreases so if you want you can mess around with the settings over here but it's a good habit to set the number of channels to the correct number that your receiver supports so that you can decrease the latency the next we have the input or the stick page if you want you can edit this so you can adjust the weight and change the expo or add a curve and also assign a switch so that whenever the assigned switch is enabled only then the channel will work then we have the mixer page in which you can again change the weight and set the offset and if you want you can assign a curve as well so if i want to assign aux channels then i can set that from the mixer screen so let's say for channel 5 if i want to assign the arming switch so I'll toggle this switch and it will automatically get detected over here which is so that's the rudder switch and if you want you can change the weight and the offset if you want to delete a channel from here oh, simply press the menu button once and then press it again so that it has a dotted line around it and then hold the exit button and then the channel will be deleted so similarly for channel 6 i'll add a switch for the flight modes so i'll use the three position switch so i'll click on menu button and i'll simply toggle that switch and then click menu to save and similarly for channel 7 I'll add another switch then we have the servo page or the output screen in which you can adjust the sub trim you can change the endpoints or the maximum and the minimum limit for the channel by default it's set to minus 512 to positive 512 and if you want you can reverse or invert the channels from here so if you select the three lines and press the menu button you can invert it or set it to normal so i'll use this when i'm setting up my fpv cord in beta flight then we have the curves page so so if you want to set up a curve for a particular channel or channels you can do that from here so the lowest i can select is a three point curve and if you look closely you can see that there's a single inverted comma which specifies that's a custom three point curve and if i select it without the single inverted comma uh, it means that it's a standard three point curve so in that case we can only edit the y-axis currently i've selected this point 
so i've created a linear curve so that i can control the dual rate or the servo throw of my rc car steering so i can use this for that so similarly you can set up the curves and use them then we have the logical switches so if you want you can use this and we also have the special functions so you can use a particular switch and then assign a certain function for that like the trainer mode or various other options that you see over here and then i also have the template screen so if you simply want to clear all the mixes you can do that or create a simple four channel mix and various other options so now let's bind a receiver and see how the process is so i'll use the fsi a10b receiver to bind it to the module so i'll plug in the binding adapter and power on the receiver so you can see that the led is flashing and the receiver is in binding mode and now i'll hold the bind button on the module and power on the radio transmitter so you can see that the led is stable and you must have heard the servo move as well so i'll unplug the binding adapter similarly i'll now bind the x6p receiver on my fpv cord and i'm using the s bus port on the receiver so even though we don't have the options to select the sub protocol like the pwm ppm and the s bus or the i bus if your receiver has a dedicated port and if you're using that the module will automatically bind with the right protocol i'll plug in a usb cable to my flight controller which powers up the receiver and i'll hold the bind button and plug in the usb cable to my computer so that way the receiver can enter the binding mode and you can see that the led is flashing and now i'll hold the bind button on the rf module and power on the radio transmitter and you can see that the led on the receiver is stable so even with open tx on the th9x you can still use the stock module which has the second generation of the flysky frequency hopping protocol and bind it to the receiver now i'm in beta flight so if i move the gimbals you can see the channel values are also moving along with the aux channels so i'll quickly center the channels because you can see that the preview of the quad is moving on its own and that's because the channels are not centered so to do that i'll go to the model settings and i'll go to the servos page or the output page and i'll adjust the sub trim for the channel 1 2 and 4 so Similarly for channel 2, which is for pitch. And then for channel 4. And now if we take a look at the preview, you can see that the quad is stable and it's not moving on its own. If you want, you can set the RC deadpan and your deadpan to prevent the drone from drifting. So I've set mine to 3. So that way the quad is stable and you can see that in the preview screen over here and because i'm using the espers port i've enabled the serial rx and in the configuration tab i've set the receiver to serial based receiver and i've selected s bus and now we'll take a look at how to set up the fail safe so for this module to set the fail safe you simply have to hold the bind button for three to four seconds and then the fail safe is set now by default in beta flight if the signal is lost the motors are shut automatically and the drone will drop and you can change that by going to the fail safe mode in beta flight by using the expert mode so you can make changes over there 
and because we don't have the custom fail safe option uh, in OpenTX for the TH9X we cannot make those changes in the radio itself however the model does have the option to set the custom fail safe but to get it working with the FPV quad uh, I'll have to make some changes in beta flight so I'll use the FSI A10B receiver and if you want to set custom fail safe through the RF module then you can set your gimbals to a certain position and press and hold the bind button so that way you can set the servos or the motors to operate depending on the channel position you decide for fail safe so let's say for example if I hold the stick all the way down so that the servos can move to this position during fail safe so I'll hold the bind button for three to four seconds and now if I turn off the radio transmitter you can see that the servos are now pointing in the direction that I had set the fail safe for And similarly, if I want to set the failsafe to the default position of the sticks, then I can hold the bind button until the LED flashes and that way the failsafe is set. So now if I turn off the radio transmitter, the servos should remain in this position. And they do. So this is how you can set up the failsafe using the FSRM003 module for the flysky th9x and with open tx i wish there was the option to set the custom fail safe in the radio transmitter so this is how you can set up a model using the open tx firmware on the flysky th9x or even the tony g9x especially if you have the second generation of the frequency hopping module from flysky and that's about it for this video i hope you guys found this video helpful and if you did, as always, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel if you are new. So thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for more videos.